Hi, I'm Sophia. Before we dive into my story, please make sure to like and subscribe for more. Now, let me take you back to where it all started. In a small town where the biggest event was the annual fall festival, I lived with my sister Laura and our mother. It was the kind of place where dreams were often whispered but rarely shouted, and mine were definitely the shouting kind. It was a crisp autumn evening when Laura's fiancé, Richard, and his family came over for dinner. They were the kind of folks who had their last names on library plaques and donated generously to every town cause. That night, as we all gathered around the dining table, the air was thick with the scent of roast and the unspoken tensions that always seemed to hover around us. So, Sophia, still planning on chasing that little business dream of yours? Richard asked, a half-smirk on his face as he passed the gravy. I nodded feeling my cheeks warm. Yes, I'm working on starting my own company. It's a lot of work, but I'm really passionate about it. His mother, Mrs. Richard, a woman who wore pearls like armor, chimed in. But dear, wouldn't you rather settle down? Maybe find a nice job here in town. Dreams are nice, but they don't pay the bills. I could feel Laura's eyes on me, hesitant and slightly apologetic. But she said nothing, her silence a subtle betrayal. I believe in making my own path, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. It's not just about money. It's about doing something I love, something that makes a difference. Richard laughed, a sound that grated on my nerves. Come on, Sophia, be realistic. How about focusing on finding a good husband instead? That's a sure way to a comfortable life. The room seemed to close in on me, their laughter, their dismissive glances. It was all too familiar, too suffocating. I stood up, my chair scraping loudly against the floor. I don't need to find a good husband to have a comfortable life. I can make my own comfort, my own success, I said, my voice rising. Maybe one day, you'll see that I was right. I stormed out of the room, leaving a stunned silence behind me. That night, in the small room I had always called mine, the walls felt more like barriers. I knew I had to leave to break free from the narrow expectations and stifling air of condescension that filled my home. The next morning, before the sun had even chased away the shadows of night, I packed my bags. I left a note for Laura and Mom, not out of spite, but out of a desperate need for them to understand. I have to do this for me, it read. The city was a stark contrast to my quiet hometown. It was loud, relentless, and unapologetically bold. I found a small apartment, the kind that had seen better days but felt like a castle to me. It was mine, and it was in the city, my first step towards the future I craved. Jobs weren't easy to come by, and I found myself juggling multiple gigs, from waitressing to temping anything, to keep my dream afloat. Nights were spent sketching designs and crafting business plans, each line, each word, a step closer to the life I envisioned. The journey was tough, tougher than anything I had ever faced, but with each setback, each rejection, I found a resilience I didn't know I had. I was building something, not just a business, but a testament to what happens when you refuse to let others dictate your worth. In that city, amidst the chaos and the endless possibilities, Sophia wasn't just a name anymore. It was a promise, a promise to myself that no matter what, I would never stop chasing what I believed in. In the heart of the bustling city, I, Sophia, now a few years older and seasoned by the relentless pace of urban life, continued my relentless pursuit of success. The city, with its towering skyscrapers and endless sea of faces, was both a battlefield and a sanctuary, a place where dreams were both made and tested. My days were a whirlwind of activity, from dawn till well past dusk. I juggled multiple jobs, each one a stepping stone towards my ultimate goal, establishing my own business. The challenges were relentless. Customers who didn't pay, suppliers who fell through, days when my bank account was as empty as the coffee pot in my tiny apartment. One evening, exhausted but unable to sleep, I found myself at a local art fair. It was there I met Ethan, a fellow dreamer with a love for photography. His easy smile and genuine interest in my work were like a balm to my weary soul. You really think my designs could be big? I asked skepticism woven through my tone. Ethan's response was a confident, unwavering, absolutely. There's a story in each piece. People love stories. Ethan became more than just a source of encouragement. He was my partner in every sense, 
standing by me through the highs and lows, always believing in me even when I struggled to believe in myself. Together, we started a family, a little haven of love and support in the midst of the chaos of city life. The turning point came when I was ready to give up. I had just lost a major client, and the weight of failure was a heavy cloak around my shoulders. That's when the call came. We love your design, Sophia. We think they're perfect for our new boutique hotel chain, the voice on the other end said. It was the opportunity I had been waiting for. My designs, in every room of a trendy new hotel chain. The deal was a game changer. Suddenly, I wasn't just a struggling artist. I was a sought-after designer, my work a symbol of urban chic and modern sophistication. The local news picked up my story, and before I knew it, I was the talk of the town, my town, and the small town I had left behind. Back in my hometown, word of my success spread like wildfire. I imagined Laura and Mom hearing about it, their surprise mingling with a dawning realization of what I had achieved. Did they feel pride? Regret? I couldn't be sure. And part of me didn't want to know. In the city, my days were now filled with meetings, design sessions, and an ever-growing list of clients. But it wasn't just about the business anymore. It was about proving to myself that I could do it, that the girl from a small town with big dreams could make it in the vast, unforgiving city. One night, as I tucked my children into bed, my daughter looked up at me with wide, curious eyes. Mommy, did you always know you'd be successful? I smiled, brushing her hair back from her forehead. No, honey, but I always knew I'd try my hardest to make my dreams come true. As I turned off the light, leaving a soft glow from the nightlight to keep the monsters at bay, I realized that the journey wasn't just about reaching the destination. It was about the lessons learned, the battles fought, and the resilience forged in the fires of adversity. Sophia, the girl with dreams too big for her small town, had found her spark in the heart of the city. The city, once a daunting labyrinth of challenges, had become my fortress, my empire where Sophia wasn't just a name, but a brand, a symbol of success and determination. In the heart of this concrete jungle, I had carved out a life that was entirely my own, a life that once seemed like a distant dream. As news of my success rippled through the channels, it inevitably reached the ears of those in my past. The first letter came on a busy Wednesday afternoon. It was from Laura, sealed with a sense of nostalgia and regret. I'm proud of you, Sophia. You've achieved so much. I wish I'd been more supportive, the letter read. Her words, meant to bridge the gap that time and indifference had built, felt like echoes from a past I had long moved on from. I pondered over a response, but found myself at a loss for words. The hurt from their past indifference still lingered, a subtle yet persistent reminder of where I had come from. A few days later, another letter arrived, this time from our mother. I always knew you were meant for great things, she wrote. Your father and I would love to see you. We miss you. Their words, laden with pride and a hint of remorse, were a bittersweet pill. Part of me yearned for the familial connection, yet the other part couldn't forget the years of being sidelined, my dreams belittled. It wasn't just letters. Richard himself reached out, this time through a phone call that I answered one quiet evening. Sophia, I must say, I underestimated you. You've done incredibly well for yourself. I wonder if there's a chance for us to collaborate on a business venture. His words, an awkward mix of flattery and opportunism, brought a wry smile to my face. Thanks for the offer, Richard. But I prefer to work with people who share my vision from the beginning, not just when it's convenient. Ending the call, I felt a sense of closure, a reaffirmation of my journey, and the choices I had made. My success was not a bridge to mend broken relationships. It was a testament to my resilience, my ability to rise above the doubts and disdain. In the midst of my busy schedule meetings, design sessions, family time, I found moments of reflection, each achievement, each milestone was a reminder of the road I had traveled. The late nights, the early mornings, the times I had almost given up. They were all part of this incredible journey. One evening, while working late in my studio, a space that was once just a corner in my apartment, now a thriving hub of creativity, Ethan walked in, a knowing smile on his face. You did it, Sophia. You really did it. His words were a simple statement, but they carried the weight of our shared journey our shared dreams. I did, I replied, looking around at the sketches, the samples, 
the tangible results of my hard work. But not alone. With you, with the kids, with every person who believed in me when I was just a girl with a sketchpad and a dream. As the city lights twinkled outside, mirroring the stars above, I realized that my story was more than just a tale of success. It was a saga of transformation, of breaking free from the chains of doubt and skepticism. The letters from Laura and Mom, Richard's call, they were not just attempts at reconciliation. They were acknowledgments of my victory. A victory not just in business, but in life. In that moment, surrounded by the life I had built, I knew that the best response to my past was the life I was living now. A life of purpose, passion, and unyielding strength. Sophia, the underestimated girl from a small town, had not just survived. She had thrived, and in doing so, had rewritten her story on her own terms. The gala, held in the grand hall of an opulent hotel, was a dazzling affair, a perfect blend of glamour and business acumen. I, Sophia, stood at the heart of it all, not just as the host, but as a living embodiment of hard-earned success and determination. The room buzzed with influential figures, but amidst them were familiar faces from my past, Laura, Mom, and Richard, each wearing expressions of mixed emotions. As I made my way to the stage for the keynote speech, I could feel their eyes on me, especially Richard's, whose gaze had taken on a new edge since my rise to prominence. The moment I began speaking, the room fell into a respectful silence. True success, I began, isn't just about what we achieve but how we uplift others along the way. It's about overcoming adversity, not just in business, but in life. My speech weaved through the tapestry of my struggles and triumphs, emphasizing resilience and self-worth. From the corner of my eye, I noticed Laura looking increasingly uncomfortable, especially under the critical gaze of Richard. After the speech, as the guests mingled and the evening progressed, I noticed Richard's demeanor toward Laura had changed. He seemed colder, his comments sharper. At one point, I overheard him muttering to Laura, Why couldn't you be more like your sister? She's made something of herself. Laura's face fell, and for a moment, our eyes met across the room. The pain and embarrassment in her eyes were unmistakable, a stark contrast to the pride and regret I had seen earlier. I excused myself from a conversation and made my way over to them. Is everything okay here? I asked, my tone even but firm. Richard gave a strained smile. Just marveling at your success, Sophia. You really are an inspiration. Thank you, Richard. But let's not forget that everyone's journey is different. Success isn't just measured by what's visible to the eye, I said, offering Laura a supportive glance. Laura gave a small nod, a silent thank you. I could tell she was struggling with Richard's newfound contempt and her own mixed emotions about my success. As the evening drew to a close, Ethan and the kids joined me, their presence a comforting reminder of the loving support system I had built. Laura, Mom, and Richard approached to say their goodbyes. Tonight was incredible, Sophia. I'm... I'm sorry for not realizing sooner, Laura said, her voice tinged with emotion. Thank you, Laura. Remember... It's never too late to start your own journey, I replied, squeezing her hand reassuringly. Mom hugged me, whispering, We're proud of you, dear. Richard, however, remained quiet, his earlier bravado seemingly diminished. As they left, I couldn't help but feel a mix of satisfaction and sadness. The gala wasn't just a celebration of my achievements. It was a stark reminder of the complex dynamics of family and the unforeseen impact of success. Surrounded by my husband, children, and true friends, I realized that this was what true success felt like. Not just the accolades and accomplishments, but the journey of growth, of overcoming not just professional challenges, but personal ones too. Sophia, once underestimated and sidelined, had not only risen to success, but had also remained true to her values, proving that integrity and strength could coexist with triumph. Did Sophia make the right choice in maintaining her distance from her family, especially her sister Laura, after achieving success. Despite their past indifference and belittling attitude, should she have extended more understanding and forgiveness, considering Laura's change in attitude? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more engaging content. Your opinions and interactions make our community stronger.